Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and today we return with round 4 of the WOR uh, Split 9 Championship. Yes, we return today here for the Spanish Grand Prix. Of course, the all new Barcelona circuit inside F123. You know, I'm be honest, not feeling too confident for this one. Uh, we come into the championship P2 still after a nightmare last weekend out in Saudi Arabia. Of course, if you missed out on that video, we'd highly recommend going back and checking it out. But today, though, we are eight points behind Bitlake Barry, who leads the championship. One point ahead of Eckerland, uh, just behind me there. So 45, 37, 36 points at the top of the table. So hopefully today, we're going to be able to try and get back fighting at the front. I just want to try and stay close to the top of the championship lead if you're new around here please do make sure you get yourself subscribed as well um obviously get trying to hit 10,000 subscribers on the channel at the moment we've made some fantastic progress in recent weeks but let's get on with it though post commentary matt ready for qualifying well here we are then back in barcelona for rain four of the season and to be honest yeah wasn't feeling too confident heading into this one barcelona obviously for those of you that watch all my main channel videos you'll know is not a track i feel particularly confident at not a track uh, that I ever feel like I'm ever going to be particularly competitive. So this one was going to be a bit more of just trying to make sure that we got to the end and got some good points on the board. You know, we've got to try and take our chances around the tracks I feel quick at, but we've also got to accept the fact that, you know, at a couple of places, it's not going to be as strong. And Barcelona was definitely going to be one of those venues, especially obviously after last week. You know, if you missed out that video from Saudi Arabia, would definitely recommend going back and checking it out. But yeah, jumping in though, uh, with my second of three qualifying laps, this would actually be my quickest run of the session. Yeah, just could not quite get the card dialed in where I wanted it. Really struggled, you know, tried so many different things with the setup this week to get the car where I wanted it and just nothing was quite working there. Felt like, you know, trying to get the perfect lap hooked up uh, was almost impossible. You know, one lap I get one corner right, then next lap I get a different section of the circuit, but all, all in all, this was the best lap I got overall. You know, fairly tidy, um, but you can see, yeah, really not pushing the track limits. Um, you know, really not sort of flying around the circuit. You know, it doesn't look like an aggressive lap. It just looks like a fairly safe lap for the most part there. As around the final corner we go, the one thing I had tried to make sure uh, was that the final corner would be completely flat out there. And a 12-0 uh, only puts us P10 at the moment there, but luckily that would be where we'd end up staying at the end of qualifying there. Seven tenths off Mikaze on the pole there. Max Schumi in P2 there and Jack Clays as well up in P3 ahead of both Alpines and obviously championship leader bit late Barry there down in P6. So yeah, I think that is our worst qualifying position of the year. They're tied with Belgium back at the start of the campaign. But hopefully, of course, when we get into Sunday's race, obviously we can try and find a little bit more pace there. And we're going to go rather aggressive on the alternate strategy today. 17 laps at the start on a set of hards and then a set of mediums to take us through to the end of the race. And I was doing that for one reason and one reason only. I was completely convinced someone was going to bin it heading into the pit lane here. For those of you that don't know, if you've never played F123, there's a huge bump now as you head into the pit lane here at Barcelona. And of course, where the track is so much higher speed, uh, someone I just think is going to hit that wall there. So lining up on the grid then on our hard compound tyres, you can see Rambo alongside me on the softs. Most cars on the mediums, five red lights. And it is going to be lights out and away we go then. Of course, probably going to lose some places early on here as we try and put the power down on the run towards someone there. Ben, my teammate, getting a fantastic launch straight up down the middle and into 10th place there. As already, we've lost the Aston Martin of Max Schumi there from the front row of the field. So he's disconnected at the start of this thing. We've got the Haas as well that's gone past us, but we're obviously going to get one place back immediately. And the second one there as we go back down the inside of the Haas car. You can see instantly... Clearly running a little bit more downforce than a lot of cars around us there as Barry uh, down the inside of Rambo. And I think that was Epix as well, just a little bit further up there. It's now tucked in uh, behind Sheep Shagger. So we've actually gained a place off the start there as we go back around the outside of my teammate Ben. So actually, yeah, much better start than I was really anticipating. As you can see Rambo trying to get down the inside of Epix there. Looks like Mikaze from the lead of the race has gone round at the bottom of the hill there. Very, very easy to do that through the undulation. So we're actually up now into eighth place then 
on lap one in the head of two cars uh, that were incredibly quick in qualifying there. Sheep Shaggy, you can see, trying to potentially psych up a move on Rambo in towards the final couple of corners, but unable to find the opportunity that time round there as we make our way through the final couple of turns. But of course, and what we learned last time out in Saudi um, was, you know, that other drivers are prone to make mistakes here as well. Obviously, we saw that a bit in Qatar uh, and obviously Belgium as well at the start of the year. There was a horrible run through the final corner. That's going to leave me vulnerable to Ben once again there. So Jack Clay's up to the lead then of the race. After all of that, uh, Barry's actually done a very, very good job and is now up into P3, and I think it's L uh, in the Alpine separating them there. So yeah, McLaren, of course, probably our biggest rivals in the Constructors' Championship. I think they came in about 12 points behind Williams into this race there, and you can see um, at the moment, if things would went like this, they'd be doing pretty well here. There's a bit more shuffling towards the front of the field there. You can see Rambo, new fast lap of the day, as so we were just dropping back ever so slightly on these hard tyres. You can see Eklund as well, obviously another big championship rival there. One point behind me as we came into this race, just gets past me down at turn one and it become pretty immediately clear I was running a bit too much downforce around this venue we were really losing a lot of time to a lot of other cars around me as something's gone on as we head up the hill there looks like another car has had an incident in there and Constant Soda has binned it actually out the final corner and that's going to bring out a safety car then very very early on in this race there I don't know what happens to Constant Soda but seems to have made quite a few mistakes early on in this campaign but yeah, probably, of course, for us, there's no point in pitting at the moment. You know, we still had a lot of cars behind me early on in this race. And, of course, we wanted to try and go quite deep into the race on the set of a hards that I debated whether it was worth bolting on a set of mediums here and trying to take them sort of lap 17, lap 18. Uh, but I just thought, you know, it's probably better just to stay out here on the set of hard compound tyres in case we get more safety cars later on. One driver that has pit, though, is, in fact, Barry there. Started the race on a set of softs, so he's almost going to get a free pit stop out of this but it's going to now be brought back onto a similar strategy to almost everyone else there. I think Mikaze as well at the rear of the field has decided to dive into the pit lane as well so interesting strategy gambles then coming out quite early here and you can see by the end of lap 5 safety car was going to be heading back in there. Eklund you see desperately trying to put some heat into the tyres there as I think it is L uh, that is going to lead the way as we head out of the final corner they're really trying to delay uh, the race restart here and it does sometimes frustrate me when other drivers are trying to build up tyre temperature still we were trying to give ourselves a little bit of breathing room there as you can see the Alpine has now gone out of the final corner and everyone look at the snake as we head out of the final turn there you can see just how powerful the slipstream of the DRS are inside F123 but as we make our way back down towards turn one the Eklund as well I was planning on trying to send it around his outside there but not able to do so lots of Constantina and up through the first corner as well there is going to mean we have to slot in to this P9 for now as you can see we've got Knox and Lux uh, just behind me I apologize if I'm butchering any names but it looks like Rambo now has jumped to the front of the field there so he's done a very very good job early on still on that set of soft compound tires likes to go for an aggressive strategy does Rambo there as you can see Cody just at the road battling I think with my teammate Ben as well so he's making good progress early on in this race but like I said for us early on you know especially on the hard compounded tyres we knew we were going to struggle in the first half of this race it was really about just trying to play methodical and hang close to the cars in front there is running slightly wide out of Campsa corner and that's going to upset my rhythm ever so slightly there is picking up a warning just one lap later here as you can see now Max obviously after that disconnect at the start trying to recover his way back up through the field there and he's going to try and have a look down the inside of me in towards turn one really don't want to try and fight the Aston Martin all too hard there so we'll let him through and we know just how quick he was in this Grand Prix so my plan was just try and stick with him over the next few laps of course as now we're really starting to get to the point where we're eyeing up the pit window in this race and sort of seeing what we're going to be able to do with the overcut and of course aiming to be super quick towards the end of the race there but on the mini map you can see Rambo built up a little bit of a lead now as Jack Clay is actually causing a bit of a train through the final couple of corners there and it looks like the Ferrari of Epics has actually gone round there so Ferrari really in the walls here Constant Soda of course already out Epics now uh, with a lot of work to do in the second half of the race but of course just other drivers making little mistakes here and there really was allowing us to gain a couple of freebies you can see now we've got Knox Desire heading down the inside as we head down in towards time on their debut race for him in the Alpha Tauri and again you know just wanted to try and play my own race we've got more and more cars scrapping out Rambo seems to have actually made a mistake there and that's going to allow L uh, to build up quite a big lead at the front of the field and this is what I mean though about other drivers making errors we just have to play this smart early on here 
We know it can go disastrously wrong. We found that out in Saudi Arabia last weekend. So just trying to play my own race here, almost into the back of Knox there as we head down the hill. We've got an eight-tenth gap back to the Haas car behind me there. And Barry, you can already see now, back up to P12 then. So he was another one that I wanted to keep my eye out on for the second half of the race. But yeah, heading as we make our way up through the next couple of corners though, just sitting back there trying to focus on my own race there, trying to keep the car clean and in one piece. We've got yellow flags out. Looks like a Ninja, actually I think it was a lap down, has had an incident as well there. So you can see now Barry though all over the back of me as we head in towards Sector 2. And yeah, just that McLaren. I don't know what setup he was running, but he seemed to have more grip and more straight line speed than me. I know his tyres were a couple of laps uh, fresher than mine. He got right around the outside down the hill there. We'll make sure we give him the room on the exit of the corner. They're not going to try and make it all too difficult for him. We just wanted to try and hang close to him as best as possible. But yeah, Barry was absolutely flying around this venue at the moment. Just had a lot more pace than we were able to get out of the car here. And like I said, just completely took the setup direction the wrong way apparently this afternoon as we round our way in towards the final couple of corners of lap 12 though are we now going to start seeing other cars peeling into the pit lane surely uh, the likes of Rambo in that Mercedes and any other soft compound runners at the front of the field are going to have to start thinking about it as we head through the final corner and there we go Rambo is going to peel it in then so next few laps then we're going to start seeing the medium runners in obviously very very interested to see how far Barry is going to be able to go as well in that McLaren car you know just how much further he's going to be able to take those tires but just still hoping as Ben now up into P2 still hoping for us of course uh, that other cars are going to hit that pit wall like I said that was kind of what my expectation was today that was my prediction for this afternoon and so there we go Ben into the pit lane as well then so back up now inside the top 10 once again of course really just wanted to make sure that we scored some good points in this race once again consistency is definitely going to be key throughout the second half of the championship there and lap 15 now starting lap 16 a couple more cars in max now into the pit lanes we're actually going to get a run on Knox as well so starting to see that transfer of pace between the mediums and the hard compounded tyres there so we've got to try and utilise this set as best as possible over the next couple of laps of course before we finally decide to dive into the pit lane there but again though Knox next lap fastest his chances as we start lap 18 back down the inside he'll go as you can see still a gaggle of cars battling just up in front there looks like Jack Clay's actually making some good progress in the McLaren a bit further up but then at the end of lap 18 my prediction has come true there you can see L in the Alpine there he has hit the pit wall on the way in somehow has not retired the car but that is going to bring out yet another safety car this afternoon and well safe to say I called it there the only thing that I hadn't quite got right uh, was that some of the medium tyre runners were able to stretch out the stint as well you can see just a little bit of a celebration uh, because I've been saying that all evening on stream how I was predicting that safety car to be released once again there and that's going to be very very interesting then so neither McLaren able to get into the pit box then at the right time they are still going to be able to get a free pit stop though and probably are still going to re-emerge ahead of me there as Ben running up all the way in P4 that's having a very very good race at this stage of the day there but we've still got just under half of the race to go then and things are going to get very very interesting as we head into the second half of the afternoon here is end of lap 21 effectively now a 12 lap sprint between now and the end of the GP there. Ben up to P3. We're up to P6 there as Jack Clays is going to lead the way there. And Eckerlund somehow has moved his way all the way up to P2 there. He's very much a dark horse in this championship fight. Very, very quick, very, very consistent. But Jack, though, going to go a lot lower earlier than the Alpine did before him as we round our way at the final corner. My goal off this restart is just to try and stick with bit late Barry as best as we can here. Of course, see if something unfolds. See if... We can try and get involved in the scrap there. As you can see Sheepshagger having to go defensive down in towards someone. Then we've got Ben just in front of him. He's going to be really, really struggling on those tyres towards the end of the GP. And you can see now the high downforce really helping me out through the first couple of corners there. But Barry just getting a mega run off the corner. A little bit of contact as Sheepshagger tries to move across over towards him. And we were just kind of watching this battle unfold, hoping that we could capitalise there. Ben slow though off the corner. So he's now going to be trying to go defensive from Barry as well. There's Sheepshagger trying to get in on the action as well as we head down the hill and unable to find anything that time around there. So Jack Lees leads the way. Eckland now up in P2 there with Barry in hot pursuit. And yeah, really that has not worked out well for me. Like I said, hoping we could try and get the better of both of them there. As you can see Sheepshagger, a little bit of a mistake as well. We're going to try and bait a move to the inside there. Actually think 
about it, but he's going to go down the inside of my teammate as well, in towards the next corner. So this has not worked out well for Ben then, dropping places like a stone at the moment, as we're going to try and go around the outside of my teammate there. I think he wanted to hang me out to dry, but was not expecting us to have the amount of grip that we did through the final couple of corners there. We're now up to P5 then of this race as we make our way out of the final corner here. And yeah, this has really been a race up to this point where we haven't been running this high all afternoon. I don't really think we had the pace to be running this high all afternoon as unfortunately lap 23 get our first penalty of the year. They're just cut a little bit tightly through Camps the Corner. They're a really stupid mistake to make at this stage of the day there. But just trying to hang on to the DRS of Sheep Shagger here as we head in towards the final few laps. And unfortunately, just was not looking possible at the moment there. L now behind us in the Alpine is going to be trying to apply some pressure there. It looks like Eklund uh, and Barry are going to be duking out for P2 then in this race. L not really uh, going to be able to fight him. His pace was far too strong throughout all afternoon there. So again, I was just hoping he could try and drag us along there. It looks like Ben and Rambo having a little bit of a battle further back. But by the end of lap 32, then starting the final lap of this GP, to be honest, we just simply yet yeah, didn't have the pace tonight, like I said. Um, you know, sat pretty comfortable in P6. You know, looks like uh, Max and Mikaze with a lot more penalties behind me. So hopefully we're just going to be able to try and make sure that we pick up the result there as Epic seems to have had another incident. And so Ferrari having a nightmare through the final sector of this venue throughout the entirety of of tonight there but looking on the minimap Jack Clays looks like he is dead set to make it four winners in our opening four Grand Prix there and McLaren looked in for a really really good result here against Williams there we're down in P6 and I think Ben is scrapping it out for about ninth or 10th place there so the gamble he made really has not paid off in the end Eklund as well just going to make a little bit of a mistake through turn seven and eight there and drop himself back down into P4 but yeah again another big learning experience for ourselves tonight there you know made quite a few mistakes just did not have the pace though and of course unlike Saudi Arabia just going to try and bring home the points that we possibly can there as Jack Clay's through the final corner he is going to win round four of the season here from Barcelona Barry is going to make it a McLaren 1-2 they're on a huge haul of points for the uh, Woking base squad there P3 I think in the end it did go to Sheep Shagger on the road but penalties uh, meant that it is going to be Eklund there ahead of L Sheep Shagger myself there with Shumi and Mikaze rounding out the top eight and we will get further clarification of the points in just a moment there you can see there we go Clay's ahead of Barry Eklund L Sheep Shagger myself there Ben did recover to P7 so sixth and seventh for the Williams team there with both Aston Martins 8th and 9th and Rambo takes that final point away from Mikaze. I think he got one of his penalties voided though so I think he might have recovered actually to P8 or P9 in the end there but there we go round four of the season here from WOR completed like I said a bit of a rough race for us uh, but I always knew that Barcelona was going to be my worst uh, one of my worst events hopefully on the calendar of course you know that means Barry now I think has got about 20 point lead in the championship over myself there Eklund is sat about sort of 10 points ahead of me I think as we leave round four of the campaign there so still definitely in the championship fight and hopefully we're going to be able to continue on uh, you know with a bit better run of form of course we'll be back live uh, this Thursday night tomorrow night actually at the time of this video going live there over on my Twitch channel uh, from 7pm UK time with around five of the year we head back to the sands of Zanvor of course following on from the real life Grand Prix this weekend so yeah thank you all so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed and we'll be back very very soon with more wor f123 league racing content a massive thank you to my patreon supporters that you can see currently on your screens if you want to join them from as little as one pound a month it would be massively appreciated and you help support my work you also get access to weekly updates from myself with everything going on behind the scenes with the channel but yeah a massive thank you to the names you see on your screen and we'll be back very soon with a brand new video